Hello and welcome to my next video on classification. Lots of, well, one person asked me to do the biodiversity topic before the others because obviously a lot of you people be learning that at the moment and so I thought I would teach it to you or help you revise it. Um, I'm probably not the best teacher but yeah. So classification. Firstly some definitions. One of these almost certainly will come up in the exams, not too bad though. Classification is the process of sorting organisms into groups based on their similarities and differences. Simple. Taxonomy is the study of classification and phylog phylogeny, phylogeny yeah, is the study of the evolutionary relationships between the organisms. Classification produces a hierarchy or hierarchy of taxonomical groups. I'm not doing well for pronouncing words today, please forgive me. So, phylogeny. The whole idea of this is that there is a shared common ancestor that all species evolved from. And the more closely related two organisms are, the more closely they've got a common ancestor until they eventually go back and have the overall common ancestor. In this example, we have species A to I. Now, you can imagine something like <clears throat> I being a monkey, H being human, G gorilla, like that. And then F is something like a zebra, and E is a horse. So E and F are still mammals, so A was the common ancestor of a mammal. But then B was the separation between monkeys and humans, and more so home, um, homo species or hominidae, and gorillas, which are slightly different. And then C was the common ancestor between humans and monkeys. So that's basically how this works. And you can find out who's related, how close they are, how long ago species diverged. That's what this is. Evidence. Evidence is based on four main areas. Behavioural, so how, how similar two animals behave. So if you have a dog and a wolf, they act quite similarly. They have packs, alpha males, alpha females, hunting, all that sort of things. But if you have a dog and a human, they act quite differently. Anatomical, so the differences in structure of the body. So yet again, the dog skeleton is much closely related to the wolf skeleton than the human skeleton. Embryological. Now, one key way of finding out how organisms developed is it by looking at their, by how the embryos develop. For example, you can any any let's say mammals will all derive from two types of embryo. Either one that starts growth from the mouth outwards, or one that grows from the anus outwards. We humans are anus outwards but other animals would be mouth outwards. So there you can split them into two groups. And molecular, so that's different sort of proteins an organism has, or how closely related DNA is. So like, you know, monkeys have 99.7%, bananas have 50 or whatever it is. So it's that sort of thing. Now, this is, this is the hierarchy. This is how we classify things. We have a domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Now, I'm sure there's some sort of numeric to is it mnemon numeric mnemonic mnemonic to remember them but uh, i can't think of one i just remember it but um what it has at the top you have domain there are three domains which will then split into five kingdoms which go into more phylums classes orders family genus and species and as you go down in each little each order there's less creatures in that taxon taxonomical tax tax yeah, you get the idea. In that section. So um, there will be, you know, in this case, three species in a genus. But in one family, there could actually be five genuses. Geni. In one order, there could be seven families, etc. Now, we also work by the binomial system of naming. That is two names. One's the genus name. One is the species name. So we are Homo sapiens. Genus name Homo, species name sapiens. Now, a few things to look out for when you're writing it. It always needs to be in italics. Obviously, it's hard to write in italics, so underline it. Now, the genus name has a capital letter. 
Species name doesn't. So Homo, capital H, Sapiens, lowercase s, and all underlined or in italics. They will, you will get no marks if you don't do that. Also, quite a few things I'm saying now in this, and also when I come to do the biodiversity section, do appear in some practical exams this year, probably next year as well. In one of the biology quantitatives, you do um, sampling, which I'll cover in biodiversity. And then in the other one, you use a dichotomous key to work out some species, and you have to write their names. And I'll show you what a dichotomous key is later. But so this is quite useful for the practical exams, which those two together will be ten percent. Um, right, domains. Domains are relatively new. Before we lived on the Five Kingdom classification system, but now we kind of branch into three domains. The Five Kingdoms are still there. Well, actually, there's six now, but you need to know about five. And there are three domains. There's eukaryote, which is eukaryotes, bacteria, also known as eubacteria, and archaeobacteria, which is archaea. Now, the difference between bacteria and archaea are two big differences. There's molecular evidence, which is RNA polymerase. If you remember from when you um, replicate DNA, you use DNA polymerase to stick it all together. Now, prokaryotes use RNA a lot, a lot more. So RNA polymerase is different in archaea and bacteria, and also different histones. Histones are are highly alkaline proteins found in, well, usually in eukaryotic cells, but in this case not. Um, they can be found in any sort of cell, and they package in order the DNA or RNA into structural units called nucleosomes. You don't need to know that, but you need to know that in archaea and bacteria they have different types of histones. Also in cell membranes, there are different bonds between lipids in the cell membrane, and also different development and composition of flagelli, flagellum, well, the flagella. So that is the main differences between them, and this often can be a four or five mark question on an exam, and very few people, well, very few people get all four marks because they skip over it. They, you know, when revising, they don't think it, you know, oh, domain's not that important, or teachers don't teach it, and it comes out, you know, quite often. So, yeah, make note. Now the five kingdoms: prokaryote, protoctista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. You have to know you know, how, roughly how to classify between each one. So firstly, prokaryote. Um, prokaryote, by name prokaryote, is without nucleus, before nucleus. So they have no nucleus. They have loops of naked DNA. Um, prokaryotic cells have nucleoids, which is kind of that kind of a striped region I've done, which is an area where basically the DNA is kept. It's like a nucleus, but isn't. But that's what they have. They have loops of naked DNA, no membrane bound organelles. They also have smaller ribosomes. Their ribosomes are 18 nanometers big, wide, and and um, ours, or eukaryotic ones, are 22 nanometers. So four nanometers difference, but at that that level it is quite different. Um, they res they um, respire on cell surface membrane rather than mitochondria because they don't have any membrane bound organelles. They're generally smaller eukaryotic cells about 30 40 micrometers and um, prokaryotic much smaller than that they can't even be in the nanometers um, also sorry for the spelling here no idea peptidoglycin cell walls there are three three of the kingdoms have cell walls each are made of a different composition this type for pro prokaryote is peptidoglycin okay protoctista no drawing here cause, well you'll see why they're eukaryotic, single celled, they can be multi celled. Free living, though they can be parasitic. Live in water, though they don't have to. And basically they are the they are the species that don't fit into the other four kingdoms. Now, recent evidence has discovered that they are all linked in a way, but not as closely as the fungi, animals, plants, all those are. But basically these are the outcasts of the classification system. Fungi, yet again, no drawing for that because I wasn't quite sure how to. Uh, they're eukaryotic. They have something called mycelium, which consists of hyphae. Hyphae are just like the structure of the of the fungi, so just like little strands running throughout it. Now these ones have chitin or chitin cell walls. 
they are they have a multinucleate cytoplasm. This just means that they have more than one nucleus per cell. They are free living and they are also sap saprotrophic. This is they kind of live on decaying matter, though they can be heterotrophic, which is they live on just other you know, they take in food from other organisms. And they also re reproduce by spores. Most common there are a few different ways, but the majority majority of them release spores like, like seeds. Plantae or plants. You, you know, this is a very basic plant cell, obviously missing out most of the stuff. Just got you got your nucleus, vacuole, cell wall, cell membrane, and chloroplasts. Right. They're eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic. They can produce their own food from photosynthesis. They have cellulose cell walls. They can produce multicellular organisms from fertilized eggs, and they can photosynthesize and also have chlorophyll. Very simple. And animalia, the most basic, the basic cell. I've basically drawn an eye, but um, yeah, that's basically what an animal cell is at a very simple level. <laughs> it's for drawing purposes. They are eukaryotic, multicellular, usually able to move. I can't think of an animal that just stands still all the time. I, th I think they can all do actual movement. They're heterotrophic and fertilize eggs that developed into a blast, a blastula. A blastula is a ball of cells bit before an embryo. There you go. Now, a dichotomous key. A dichotomous key is a way of identifying organisms. You have a number of questions which are yes or no answers and you'll have some pictures or you know you might actually have a real real organisms in front of you and you have to find out what the name is. A good dichotomous key will have one question less than the number of samples. In this case I know I know there's like A, B, and stuff but there are seven questions eight organisms that's generally what a dichotomous key will do for a practical exam you'll be doing dichotomous leaves yeah well a dichotomous key of leaves and uh yeah it's horrible i didn't like doing that because some of the questions can be very you know misleading sometimes because you you know it's slightly down to your own judgment but usually a good dichotomous key will be very clear. In this case, we just do any of them. Let's say we wanted to find out what organism four was. Okay, now that, I think, I mean, you look at that and go, that's a narwhal. But if we go through, right, so does it have two or four functioning legs or does it have no legs? Now, obviously, no legs. So go to question three. Is it unicellular, multicellular? Multicellular, question five. Is it heterotrophic or autotrophic? It's an animal, so it must be heterotrophic. So six, does it live in the ocean or on land? Lives in the ocean, narwhal. That's how it works. So you just follow the question, looking at things. Now, it, it can be much, I mean, these are obviously very different organisms. If you are doing something like, you know, I think it was five leaves, it can be quite hard to distinguish something, especially let's say, if they have three, uh, does the leaf have three points? You might think it, it might be a kind of blobby one, so it kind of has three blobs, which are and the leaf you happen to have is a little bit pointy. So you go, yes, it has three points, when really they're not counted as points by the key, and then you get the wrong answer. That is very common. So these can be quite hard. So watch out. Anyway, now question time. Yay! As usual from past exam papers, blah de blah de blah. The leopard or this question A. Eh? The leopard Panthera pardus is a member of the cat family. Complete this table. Kingdom, blank, class, blank, family, genus, blank. And the names blank, Caudata, Mammalia, Carnivora, Felidae, blank, and Pardus. Five marks. B. Animals and plants are eukaryotic. Name two other eukaryotic kingdoms. And C. State three features of fungi. I'll give you some time to pause if you want to do these questions first, and then I'll go through the answers. Good, right. So, answers. I will read them just from top to bottom, not from column to column. Animalia, phylum, order, panthera, underlined, capital P, species. B, fungi and protoctista. And then C, they are eukaryotic. They can be heterotrophic or saprotrophic. 
They have chitin cell walls, hyphae and mycelium, reproduced by spores and multinucleate. There we go. In conclusion, classification is the grouping of organisms based on similarities and differences. Taxonomy is the study of classification. Phylogeny is um, the study of the evolutionary relationships between organisms. There are three domains, bacteria, archaea and eukaryote. A. Kingdoms, there are prokaryotes, protoctist, fungi, plantae and animalia. All the, and all the evidence for the classification is based on four main four main areas, which is behave, behavior, behavior, anatomy, embryos, and molecular stuff. And you also need to know how to use a dichotomous key, just a way of deciding what animal is what. So if you're given unknown or well, organisms, given unknown organisms, you can decide which organism is which. So thank you for listening again. It's a bit longer video this time because it's covering a little bit more than in the last two. I will continue to do bi biodiversity. Hopefully, be able to get it finished tomorrow. Um, it's quite useful for me actually because um, I'm getting to revise it as well, which is always fun. But um, yeah, it, none of this stuff is that hard. It's just a little bit to remember and watch out for the questions. I will once I've gone through enough of this you know enough of all of this i will go through an actual past paper with on on call well on call on youtube um kind of you know saying the questions what kind of answers they would expect um and i'll be using the mark scheme you know as because that's the best thing you can do is get questions and do the questions from the mark scheme because at the end of the day they're not going to mark you on how, how well you've memorised the OCR textbook or the Cambridge textbook if you've got that or any other pack of work you have. At the end of the day, they are going to be marking from the mark scheme. So you want to know how the mark scheme likes to word things. As usual, leave any comments, likes, subscribes, none yet, but uh, hopefully soon. It's only been a day, so yeah. To be honest, I've, got, um, I've already had about nearly 40, 40 views, which I think is great. So well done keep it up and uh, yeah feel free to leave comments or anything you want so thanks goodbye